everybody had a busy day and uh, most of us are tired, weary, <laughs> right? It's me and it's me against your couch, <laughs> me against your bedtime. Uh, <laughs> Praise Lord. Let's go ahead and uh, begin with prayer. Uh, I was asked to lead. Now, pray for Pastor. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, O oh God, for this night. Lord, we thank you, Lord, O oh God, for your goodness, your kindness. Father, your mercy, your grace, Lord. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for dealing with us, Lord, O oh God, and having patience with all of us. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, that you are the God that forgives us of our sins. You are the God of mercy. You are the God of grace. Oh, we can never have too much of mercy. Never can have too much grace, Lord. We thank you, Lord, O oh God. Never runs out, nor does it ever loses its power, O oh God. You are faithful. You are just. You are true. And we are grateful this morning, O oh God, that we know your name, Lord, that we are the people of your name, Lord, O oh God, that, Lord, that you have adopted us, Lord, O oh God, into this. You have grafted us into this, Lord. You've chosen us, Lord, O oh God, to be here even at this particular time and moment, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for your grace, Lord, O oh God. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just have mercy on our pastor, Lord, O oh God. Lord, we ask, Lord, O oh God, that right now, Lord, even right now, Lord, O oh God, that you touch him, Lord, touch his body, Lord, O oh God, heal him, Lord, O oh God, from the, from the top of his head all the way down to the tips of his toes, Lord, O oh God, starting with the bone and the marrow, O oh God, to the cells, O oh God, the blood, Lord Jesus, Lord, bless him, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we claim him healed even right now, this hour, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray over your saints, Lord, O oh God. In Jesus' name, you have a word for them, Lord, O oh God. You've chosen them. You knew who was going to be able to be here tonight, Lord, O oh God, and you're going to minister, Lord, O oh God. There's going to be signs and wonders that is going to be following. Lord, your people are going to be healed tonight, Lord, O oh God. Your people tonight are going to be delivered, Lord, O oh God. Hope is going to arise. Faith is going to arise. Lord Jesus, you're going to have your way in this service tonight, Lord, O oh God. And we are into anticipating, Lord, O oh God, a movement of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the angels, Lord. You've already purposed them, Lord, O oh God, to minister on our behalf, Lord, O oh God. And we thank you, Lord, O oh God, for the angels. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, Lord, O oh God. We hold the keys to the keys of David tonight. We are in your presence, O oh God, tonight, Lord, O oh God. We declare the keys of David tonight, Lord, O oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you for your power, your anointing tonight, Lord, O oh God. Lord, let your word go forth, Lord, O oh God. We pray just have your way. Your way is perfect, Lord, O oh God, and we thank you, Lord, O oh God, for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, just be um, stand just for just a moment. Um, I'm going to read... Um, I'm going to read a piece of scripture first, and then I'm going to get right on in on this. I'm going to try to go as fast as I can, but not too fast where you don't understand. Uh, this scripture is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. My favorite. I think, I think this has to be my favorite. When I'm giving a Bible study, uh, when I give my personal Bible study, this is, this is where I start. The word of the Lord says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting with verse 1, Moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. Did you know that we're saved by the gospel? I don't think we're ignorant of that, are we? We are saved by the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I have delivered unto you first all that which I have also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the 12. Did I read 
verse 4? Okay, all right. I'm going to stop right there. I just wanted to read till 4, which is the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. You can be seated. God is very protective over the gospel. Very protective. You can't take anything away from it. You can't add to it. Amen? You can't take any way, anything away from, from his, his deity to his creation. You cannot take that away from him. He's very protective. We take that away from him. Be sure there's going to be judgment. There's going to be judgment. Uh, last week, uh, I stopped at uh, Cain and his descendants, how, how corruption and, and, and evil just continued to get worse and worse and worse. And God, God repented that he even made man. It grieved them so much because of all of their wickedness that they were doing. They took, them, they took upon themselves and made other gods, which there is no God other than our Lord Jesus Christ, which he commanded them not to do. Whenever, 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 whenever uh, wickedness and sins are great, there is going to be judgment. We see that happening over and over and over again in scripture and at this point here we see we see that uh, Noah Noah here he was just a small remnant just a small remnant of people that were called by God God always had a small remnant even even when the whole world was disobedient in in their ways and and practiced what they were practicing and doing what they were doing God always had a small remnant all the way through time always had a small group of people that that had a heart after God and that would call upon his name and and here God found Noah and he told Noah to go ahead and build an ark God evidently provided him the knowledge, the understanding, the know-how to do it, how to put it all together, gave him the provision. Whenever God gives you a vision, he's going to give you the provision to do it. He's going to give you the, he's going to give you the know-how. He's going to give you the blessing. He's going to give you, give you everything that you need to fulfill what he wants fulfilled. Amen? So, God provided a uh, gopher wood, which gopher wood is is like a gluey, a gluey substance wood. You just put it together and it just glues together. It's just the type of wood it is. While while Noah was building the ark, God gave space and room for man to repent. But man just wouldn't repent. Noah do you realize that you're building a huge boat in the middle of the desert? Do you know that the waters, the Mediterranean, is way over yonder? How are you going to get this big, massive boat over to the water? It's just you, your sons, your sons' wives. How are you supposed to do that? Did you know at, at this point here it never rained? It was the dew. Uh, God caused the dew to come up from the ground and uh, it watered all the ground, all the grass and everything. So there, there was no need for there was no need for rain. So rain never had even come down from the sky. So when when uh, Noah described that there's going to come a cloud and that cloud is going to carry rain and it's, the rain is just going to come down from the heavens, it's going to fill this whole earth and it's going to go higher, even taller than the highest mountain. Noah has definitely gone off of his rocker, right? So the people they just kept on just kept on in their in their ways and in their state of mind and their practices and all the things uh, that they had did to worship their gods, their idols, and they kept on getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And once again, Noah and his family was that small remnant that would keep the word of God and keep it keep it keep going and be faithful 
and he built the ark. Amen? Nor warns of judgment to come. The people, they just wouldn't listen. Isn't that just like today? You tell them, you warn them. I worked with a guy, um, I worked with, um, uh, with a guy in uh, one job of mine. I worked at Caterpillar. I worked in the warehouse, a hot, sweaty warehouse. And uh, this, I, I, I grew friends with this um, guy. He was, uh, he was agnostic. And um, he took a liking to me, and I took a liking to him. And we talked quite a bit. And um, he started to, uh, started to ask me some questions, and he found out that, you know, I'm Christian. And... Um, He's like, one thing, that, one thing that I don't understand is before Jesus, before Mary, there has been other gods that have died, that was buried, and rose again, rose, rose uh, and, and they proclaimed themselves to be gods. And did you know that their birthdays, they all fall on December 24th? And we celebrate, you know, even, even as agnostics and, and uh, pagan, pagan worship, we all have these holidays that the Christian holidays fall on as well. And I've already been in this, I've already been in the gospel probably over about, over, well, 10, 10 years plus, and I've been studying and uh, that kind of puzzled me a little bit because I, 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 never, I never knew of that and started to show me different things and, and tell me to look here, look, look there. And I started to look and I started to see, I started to see all these gods and these different names and these, these different countries. And uh, here, you, you know, you have Greek mythology, you have, you have Asia, you have China, you have all these, you have all these gods that have, have this God that, that died and, and rose to the sun. They worship the sun and they have, uh, there's a mother and then there's a son and, 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 similarities just uh kind of kind of confused me a little bit until until I really started um until I really started studying this and I'm like God I know you have an explanation for all this I know you have an explanation for all this this isn't this uh the devil is a liar the devil the devil he's a counterfeit he's going to, he's going he's going to take take away whatever he can amen he's a counterfeit he can't create anything he can't start anything new, but he can twist. He can twist everything, right? So we find we find in Genesis chapter 10 verse 1 and 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 I'm going to get into that because we may run into that. You know, these days are just going to get worse and worse and worse and we're going to come to a point where there's not going to be one more there's not going to be one more human being that will accept the Lord Jesus Christ. There will be no more, no more people that, that, will, that will adhere to the gospel. They won't want to hear, hear the gospel anymore. There will not be not one more person because they are so caught up into, into their own ideologies and, and their comfortable living and, and then in their seeking of the truth. However, today, there are those that are in pagan worshiping. There are people that are, that are in and all of these other different types of denominations and, and serving other gods. They're not in truth. However, they're truth seekers. They're truth seekers. They're wanting to seek the truth. And all we have to do is actually show them the truth and God's going to Give us that spirit of truth. And, and, and they're going to feel that because it's different from what they're receiving. From what they're practicing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? 
They're truth seekers. They're seeking after truth. They want to know the truth. They don't have the truth. They think they have the truth, but they don't have the truth. And once we come with the truth, wow, okay. We come, we come to this scripture that I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That is powerful. That is powerful. We are saved by the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, not of Nimrod. Not of Horus, not of Jupiter, amen? Genesis, Genesis 10, 1 speaks of, of Noah and his three sons and their descendants. That chapter, um, I think it goes down to like chapter... Uh, chapter 8, describing describing the lineages, if you want to um, take that home with you and, and look at that. Genesis chapter 10, starting with verse 1. I'm not going to read it, however, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and paraphrase just for sake of time. Um, here, here in Noah, we have a small, once again, we have a small remnant that God can work with. Noah, a preacher of righteousness, as he prepares the ark. Because of Noah, God's grace is poured out. Giving the world space to repent, Noah was building the ark. But the world would not repent. Now, once God's judgment, now we once, now we once God's, ooh, I don't know how I wrote that, but Anyway, that kind of sounded a little bit funny. Um, God will give us space to repent. Even though that there's wickedness on the earth and we have our own things that we do wrong, amen, God is giving us grace and he's giving us time to repent. Amen? Thank the Lord. But if we continue in our disobedience, God is forced to bring judgment. That's just the way it works. You know, uh, people say, well, how, how, how could you have such a loving God and, and he brings upon all these judgments? How, how comes he brings judgment even on children? I'm going to tell you why. God brought judgment on the whole world so that he could start over with a small remnant of righteous people. He wanted to start over. If you have if you have little children that are in disobedience and you bring them over or let me let me say it this way here. People tend to believe that everyone goes to heaven. Right? As long as you're a good person. I mean, you, you don't kill anybody, right? You don't harm anybody, you don't hurt anybody. God's going to God's going to say, you know, okay, you know, you, you've, you've done a, you've done a good job you know you, you've you know you haven't done this that or the other however there's there's none good no not one if everyone goes to heaven why would I want to go there because it's just going to be like this it's just going to be like this it doesn't make any sense does it so there has to be a way to get into heaven, the right way to get in heaven. If we don't get in through the gospel, God calls us a thief and a robber. So no, not, not everyone goes to heaven. I'm sorry, it's just not that way. God is about righteousness and holiness, and we're going to get there through righteousness and holiness. Amen? It's, it's your decision. It's not, God's not kicking you out. God's not, God's not uh, 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 abandoning you. He's not saying, yeah, you got the right haircut. You definitely don't have the right haircut, you know. No, 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 it's nothing like that at all. It's whether or not, it, it's, it's a heart condition, amen. Amen. On the way here, God had a word for somebody, and he wanted, me to, he wanted me to say to somebody either here or online, if you're worrying, you have a worry, stop worrying, do the right thing, do the right things, repent, 
do the right things and seek after God and God will turn that worry and that situation around. Amen. I don't know if it's for here or if it's for online, but God just stopped me right here and I had to had to say it again or bring it out. Amen. Stop worrying. God's going to take care of it. He's going to see you through. That's what he told me. It's the word of the Lord. So, in this case, God brings judgment on the whole world through flood. Through a flood. Brought water down from heaven. Filled the whole world. Filled the whole world. If you didn't get on that boat, if you did not get on that boat, you were not saved. Plain and simple. If you did not get on this boat, you will not be saved. And God gave plenty of time, plenty of space in order for men to make that decision. So don't blame God. Don't blame God. God has given you time and space, ma'am, sir, gentlemen, young person. God has given you space and time even right now to come to repentance. So don't blame God. Amen? Let's continue on. Out of the three sons, Shem continued the righteous bloodline. Out of Shem, Shem, uh, Shem's bloodline, we have King David, and then later we have King Jesus. Ham and Japheth, they were still with mischief. They carried over sin from the world before the ark rested. So they already had a, disobedi a disobedient and a reckless way of life and thinking before they even got on the boat yet. God was still merciful and allowed, allowed anybody who that wanted to get on that boat to get on that boat. Amen? And the same thing for today. Anybody who wants to get on the boat, you can get on the boat. However, they, they, they did not have a righteous, they did not have righteous motives. They carried on the same sin as they did before, uh, before the flood. So now they're now they're carrying this into the new world. Evidently, uh, evidently, um, when the boat rested, uh, uh, Ham did something to his father. His father woke up and recognized what his son did, and he he cursed he cursed Ham. I'm not going to get too much into that. However, you can you can find that all out in chapter ten. Ham begat Cush, you can see that in Genesis chapter 6, who then begat Nimrod. You can see that in Genesis chapter 8. Nimrod is described as a mighty hunter before the Lord. Evidently, evidently uh, where, where they were at, they had a problem with lions. And they had a problem with lions attacking, so this Nimrod here, uh, myth goes on and tells that that he was a hunter, a lion hunter, and his his uh, his his statue or his idol is one of carrying carrying a lion. You can look that up. Google's a great place to go. However, Nimrod, Nimrod would then not only be a mighty hunter, but he would also be a hunter after God. He was disobedient. He was disobedient, and God, God wanted man to replenish the earth and to spread out. Right? That was God's plan. It's credited to Nimrod to have convinced the people to go against God's plan to multiply and replenish the earth to become an Aryan nation with one language and a name that would be feared by all men. He became a tyrant and forced the people to make brick and slime of mortar. Sound familiar? This was... This was 
uh, this was to construct and build a tower to reach the heavens. The tower was to become the city of refuge, hence another flood. They wanted to protect themselves if God was going to go ahead and destroy the face of the earth again with floods. So Nimrod wanted to build a tower that would reach the heavens so that he can look into the heavens and see the plan of God. Now, I don't know what kind of kind of construction uh, 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 machinery or whatever they had, but we look at these buildings that, that have been created it's almost impossible for man to, to, to move these types of stones and, and to construct and, and unless they have powers from somewhere else. This tower, once again, was, be, was to become the city's refuge. Inside this tower, they had everything. It was shopping malls, everything. Everything was inside. All they had to do was, once it was built, all they had to do was go in and live in it. They had houses in there. Everything was, was made for them. They, they didn't have to go anywhere else except for right there. After ruling over Babylon, then, then, then later, known as Shinar today, uh, and known as Iraq, he went forth and duplicated his efforts and headed, headed east to the city of Nineveh and the surrounding cities. It is attributed to, it is attributed to, to Nimrod of building this kingdom of Nineveh and the surrounding cities there. We know a little bit about Nineveh, don't we? This city would, would later be known for killing God's prophets. Remember Jonah? Jonah was told to go warn these people that, that what they were doing is wrong and that they needed to repent. Jonah was just afraid for his life because he knew that they were prophet killers. Amen. What would you have done? <laughs> would you run away knowing that, knowing that the city of this city... Further, furthermore, these countries would become anti-Semitic and hostile against the Jews, as we see happening today. Sins of Nineveh. Sins of Nineveh. Nineveh. The sins of Nineveh is the plotting against God, idolatry, vile behavior, shedding of blood, plummeting, plummeting, plummeting. Steal goods from places or persons, typically using force, and in a time of war or civil disorder, plummeting. Enslaving nations, presumptions, presumptions, presumption. Behavior perceived as arrogance, disrespectful. And transgression, the limits of what is cruelty. Does anybody have, have any of that? Lies, rapes, sorceries, harlotry, witchcraft, seduction of nations. Sounds just like our world today, doesn't it? Listen, folks, that, that period of, of, of space that we have to reach the loss, we're getting closer and closer to that very end where there's going to be no more thereafter. Man will accept the gospel. We only have a short period of time, folks, and there's going to be judgment. If, if judgment came upon, came upon, these, uh, came upon uh, Noah's day, it's going to come upon our day eventually. It's gathering time. It's gathering time. We need to gather 
men, it's gathering time. Brother, to bring, to bring uh, uh, you know, guests into your home and to, and to open up the word of God, that's exactly what this world needs today. We need, we need more of that. And we need, we need not only once a month, but at, and in one house, we need once a month in a few houses. But we got to start somewhere. Amen. amen. We got to start somewhere. We got to do our part. Amen. And we are. Uh, eventually, that will grow. Eventually, that will grow, and and we'll have we'll have several houses that that you can choose to go through. I'm sure Pastor will assign some people to go to go to here to go to there just so that the house is not empty. Amen? Eventually, Nimrod, Nimrod was a mighty man, but hey, Nimrod, there's always, there, there's, there's time of death. Eventually, Nimrod was put to death because of all of his ne- evil deeds. People just get sick of being, being, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, whooped and, and, you know, who wants a tyrant? Who wants to work with a tyrant? Who can befriend a tyrant, right? Who can, who can? So myth, myth says that, uh, the myth says that, that he was, uh, that he was killed and um, they took all of his body parts and they took his body parts and they put it in every, every city that he, that, uh, that he built every kingdom that he built his wife Samarimus ascends to the region of Babylonian throne as queen in her mythology or lies in history proclaiming Nimrod to have ascended to the heaven and became the sun god a solar deity. This is the first mention of human ascension into the heavens. She would claim that she became impregnated from the sun's rays, being a virgin. Right. The first immaculate conception. And that a virgin birth, son, is the reincarnated deity of the father Nimrod. Samarimus would name him Tammuz. This name is briefly mentioned in the Bible in Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 13 through 15. Uh, it's mentioned that, that these ladies would come to the temple crying and later the catholic church they would worship they would they would accept this type of this type of thing and and claim it to be their their um holiday called lent samarimus would also be attributed in the bible as queen of heaven see jeremiah 7:18 Jeremiah 44, verse 17 through 19, and verse 25. The queen of heaven. She would be known as the queen of heaven. Genesis chapter 11 would tell us while constructing the Tower of Babel, God comes down to see what man has made and changed their languages to many languages and people so they could no longer communicate to complete the tower. This caused the people to scatter into all parts of the land as God had commanded. However, the legacy of Nimrod did not stop, did not stop there. As we can see here, no, this is not the one that I want. Here we go. The descendants of of Ham went into Africa and Arabia. Shems went into Assyria. Japheth was in Asia Minor, Asia Minor and Europe. Now, once again, 
this Nimrod, this, this Samarimus, and Tammuz, which, which these languages still took on that same practice of worship, and they just named them different names. So now we have Greek mythology, you have, you have uh, Asian uh, mythology, you have Roman mythology, you have all of these uh, 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 Egyptian uh, mythologies, you have all these mythologies that carry on, that carry on these names. It's just attributed to, 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 um, uh, to Nimrod, uh, Semiramis, and Tammuz. Their names are just changed. So when people say, when people come, come to you and say, you know, your story is great, but you know, it's been told even before Christ had come. No, no, no. We have the truth. This is, this is, this is all a lie. Uh, um, these are just, these are just names. These are just names that they've attributed to their gods. Just like Baal. Baal is attributed to Nimrod. So once again, Ham's descendants landed in the parts of Africa, Egypt, and Arabia. Egypt is known in the Bible as being the land of Ham. Did you hear that? Egypt in the Bible is noted in Psalms chapter 78, 51, Psalms chapter 105, verse 23, and verse 27. Psalms 106 and 22 as being the land of Ham. In Egypt, it, Egypt is known in the Bible as being the land of Ham. This is all in the Bible. Japheth's descendants landed in Asia Minor and Europe. In Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18, the, que the queen of heaven is mentioned as the wife, as the false god Baal. also known as Moloch. These names stem, once again, from, from Nimrod. Samarimus is also associated with several goddesses, including Ishtar. Uh, Ishtar is the Mesopotamian goddess of love, sexuality, warfare, worshipped by the Assyrians and the Babylonians. The Canaanites, the, uh, the Canaanite goddess of war, and it's contributed to Baal worship. Another goddess that is associated with um, that is associated with Semiramis, uh, Ishtar, is the goddess Diana. You can also find that in the Book of Acts. I think. The book of Acts describes um, uh, Diana, how, how they, um, um, uh, they had built a, uh, uh, a temple for, for Diana. Actually, uh, Solomon built, built uh, many different uh, um, uh, temples for his, his foreign wives. I think I've, I think I've touched a little ground on that here as well. Nimrod is associated to the Egypt, uh, the Egyptian sun god Horus. In Greek, he's associated with Zeus. Rome, he's associated with Jupiter. Lebanon as Baal, just to name a few. Semiramis is associated with the Egyptian goddess Isis. In Greek mythology, uh, Aphrodite, Aphrodite. In Rome, Diana. And in, Cath and in Catholicism, Catholicism She's also associated with the queen of heaven. Tammuz is associated with the Egyptian Seth. Greek mythology as um, uh, Dionysus. Rome mythology as Itis or Atis, A-T-T-I-S. So here we have the deception of man that can be like God's. 
in Genesis chapter 1, it is said that the serpent said to Eve that man can be like gods, knowing good and evil. So this is where all this is, this is, this is all what this stems from, that one little word where you could be like gods, knowing good and evil. That's where all this stemmed from. Causing man to think that there is more than one God and there can, they can be like gods knowing good and evil. evil. Then they started the trinity of deities, father, mo mother, son worship. These concepts would later be adopted by the second century Catholicism church during the time of Constantine. Again, the Catholic Church adopted all of these all of these holidays into their into their worship. They worship their gods and and just put their their own uh, or of course you know the statue the statue that's that's in in um, in Rome um, is the statue of Jupiter and they worship it as Peter. There is, there is a right way, and there is a lie. There is a right, and there is a wrong. This is what the enemy, this is what the devil wants to confuse, confuse us, confuse us in. No longer will we be confused. When a, when a calamity or devastation or a trial comes and lingers a while, we begin to think, where is God in all this? Is there even a God? If God was so loving, why would he cause such devastation? Again, man grew worse and worse and worse and worse. There's going to be judgment. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if... You keep in memory what I've preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I have received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. If you're writing this down, if you're writing this down, you're going to see you're going to see, uh, and I'm, al I'm I'm almost done here. I just wanted to just want to share this with somebody that that is interested in looking up these scriptures. Um, I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. This is in this is in our Bible, and this is how this is this is the history. This is history of man uh, of of the children of Israel. How God became so wrath with the children of Israel because they kept on getting caught up in this type of worship of Baal worship, and it's uh, um, it is an abomination towards God. God is God, and we are to worship Him and none else. He is a jealous God, and He wants us to worship Him and Him only. He is the Creator of the heavens and the earth, not Nimrod, uh, Nimrod Baal, or or whoever they want to uh, associate His name to. He is not God. And he does not provide water. He does not provide water for crops. God stopped. God stopped this God right dead in his tracks when when they tried to call out to their gods and say, Lord, Lord Baal, go ahead and stop these rains. What happened? Rain just kept on falling. Where's your gods? Where's your gods? Maybe you want to knock on their door a little bit louder. Maybe you want to call out their name a little bit louder. 
as Elijah was saying to their gods, right? Why don't you go ahead and not? Maybe they're sleeping. Those gods, they sleep and they slumber. Our God never sleeps nor slumbers. So why don't you wake up their gods? Why can't, why, why did their gods stop the rain? God is going to prove that he is God. God is going to prove that he is God and that he is the only God and we are to worship him and he's going to prove it and he proved it through he proved it through their Egyptian gods uh, he, he went he went face to face with every one of their gods within within frogs frogs they just came out of the Nile River just kept on coming just kept on coming just kept on coming they were stepping on frogs they were sleeping with frogs frogs were just falling on their faces they couldn't stop the frogs from coming out. Lice, lice just came, and, and they woke up with lice all over, their, all over the hair. Egyptians, they're so about cosmetics and, and, and about beauty, and they were so conscious about lice, they kept on co constantly looking in their hair to see if they got lice, and one day they woke up with all this lice in their hair. God came across their gods face to face. Where is your gods? There is no God. There is no God. There's no other God to look towards except for our God. Amen? Plagues came. The, the, the Nile River turned into blood. They worshipped the Nile River. They sacrificed into the Nile River. They threw their own children into the, into the Nile River to the crocodiles. Worshipping their false gods. God put a stop to all that. God put a stop to, to the flood. Stopped all of that. Stopped with, with what man was trying to do and tr trying to create a name for themselves. When you're trying to make a name for yourself, God is going to stop all of that. God's going to bring judgment. He's going to show he's going to show forth his power and he's going to show forth that he is God. And one day he's going to show forth that he is God. He's going to come into clouds and we're going to be, be looking up into the heavens and and every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. They're just we're just going to have this sense of knowledge that he is the true God. There is going to be such an an aura around Jesus Christ when He is in the air that even the even the atheists, even the the devil worshippers, even the pagan worshippers, they're gonna have they're gonna feel this sense and this aura that that is God, and they're just gonna bow their knees to God and give Him worship and praise. It's temporary, folks. Their, their time and their worship and their, and their understanding is very temporary. Very temporary. One day, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord, God, and Savior. Amen. He is God that is going to prove that he is, that he is God. Amen. He is he's righteous. He's mighty. He's holy. He's loving. He is giving us time and space. He's giving us time and space to repent and turn from our evil, wicked ways before judgment. Listen, God doesn't God doesn't want to bring a hammer down. God doesn't want to punish us. That doesn't please the Lord. That does not please the Lord. He would that everyone come would come to the full knowledge of who he is. He would want everybody to come to the full knowledge of the gospel. He wants everyone, listen to me, he wants everyone to come to the full knowledge and understanding of who he is. He is that loving. He wants us to come, every single one of us. There is not one person that, that God is excluding from the equation of heaven. He is after us all. He is after us all. All we have to do is humble yourself. Humble yourself. Know that you are a sinner and that I need a savior because we can't save ourselves. If we could save our if we could save ourselves, we wouldn't need Jesus to come and, and die on a cross take the beatings that he had that he had taken for us he would never he would never even had to step foot god would never had to had to come to flesh and to step on this earth if we could save ourselves by just being good he would have never had to do that but he had to do that he had to do everything that he did on this world so that we could be saved he had to he had to come down off his throne and wrap himself in flesh and come to this world as, as a baby. I don't know if I'd want to start all over. I don't, I don't know if I'd want to come down and 
start as a little baby. I don't know about that. Especially in a time of, of, of his time. And then knowing that he would go to a whooping post and die such an embarrassing death, such a crucial death, So when you are in your studies, you're in your studies of the Old Testament, you're in your studies of the New Testament, know that that the people that are in those areas, they were pagan worshipers. They were pagan worshipers. Even, even, Even in a town, I can't remember exactly what town they were in, but they were in a town like way up here. Jesus took his disciples and and said, who does men say that I am? Jesus was was in in an area that was filled with paganism. That was pagan that that were worshiping other that worshiped other gods. And Jesus, he just wanted to know the condition of our heart and say, okay, what do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? Who do those people out there say that I am? Peter said it right. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Sometimes God just wants to test us to see to see exactly what we think of him. He will question us and he will try us just to see how we respond, just to see how we will respond. And thank God they responded correctly. When you go and you read your word, just don't read it for the word, word by word, line by line. Get into the word. Know where they're at. Know what type of people that, the, the, the type of people that God is speaking to Know the people that are in the city. What do they worship? Were they anticipating Jesus to come through? Or are they just worshiping their gods? Now you know the truth that when you see Baal, you see Kamash, or you see these other gods, these other other idols that they're worshiping, you're gonna know, you're gonna know that, well, wait a second. Brother Romick taught us about that, and uh, that's Nimrod. That's just a man. Those aren't gods. That was just a man like you and I one day, and he just decided to go against God. Those aren't gods. There's no such thing as gods. If there were gods, God would say that there was gods. But there is no other God. Let us stand. How will you respond to God? How will you respond to God now? How do we want to respond to God in all of this? Come, come. I don't know why I'm even asking you to come. We're going to humble ourselves. We know the truth. We know that there is just but one God. There is no other name in the Bible that whereby men should be saved, and that is by the name of Jesus. We know no other name than the name of Jesus. There is no other saving name than the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for not making it confusing, Lord, oh God, that we would have to worship so long for this one God, the, the Father, and that we would have to worship so long for, for the, uh, the Son and, 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 and so much on the Spirit because all of this is in you, Lord. You are the Godhead. It all dwells in you, Lord. All of these 
dwell in you bodily, Lord Jesus. We worship the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He is. He is God. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight, Lord Jesus. We humble ourselves, Lord, O oh God, and we worship, Lord, O oh God. We bring our sacrifice of worship and praise unto you, Lord Jesus. Lord, because we know that you are God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this message, Lord, oh God. Even though that we didn't swing on, swing on the fans and we didn't run and shout and hoop and holler. Hallelujah. But this is the true word of God. We know that these gods that they worshipped were false and that we know that, that you were angered. Lord, we do not want to anger. We do not want to worship false gods. We do not want to worship things. We don't want to worship animals. We don't want to worship water. We don't want to worship creation. Lord, we want to worship the creator. We worship the creator. We don't worship things. Lord Jesus, we find ourselves times, time and time again, Lord, oh God, disobedient and we go the wrong way Lord oh God we ask tonight Lord Jesus Lord that you would not lead us to temptation Lord but deliver us Lord oh God from the evil one Lord Jesus lead us not into temptation oh God but deliver us oh God oh Lord Jesus, we humble ourselves Lord oh God unto you tonight Lord oh God we declare unto you that you are God and that we will serve you just like the people of Moses they declared unto you that you are God and we will worship you only. Those people, they worshiped you and worshiped you only, oh God. They made up in their own minds that they were going to go forth and that they were going to worship you, oh God. And we tonight, Lord, oh God, we declare that you are God. And as far as me and my family and me and my house, we will serve the Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We will serve the Lord God Almighty. He's shown himself true and faithful hallelujah 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 thank you lord 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 hallelujah do you feel this peace tonight hallelujah hallelujah God is not done. He wants to perform. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you high praise tonight, Lord, O oh God. Lord, change us, Lord, O oh God. Change the things, Lord, that we ourselves cannot change, Lord, O oh God. Turn us, Lord, O oh God, where we cannot be turned, Lord, O oh God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus, help us, Lord, O oh God. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Oh, God, thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, oh God, for instruction. We thank you, Lord, oh God, Lord, for your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this is the true word of God, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Father, we, we've... Uh, uh, we are going to do the right things, Lord Jesus. We're going to go out. We're going to tell. We're going to witness, Lord, oh God. We're going to bring them in, Lord Jesus. Send them, Lord, oh God. Send us to the right people, Lord, oh God, that want to hear the word, Lord Jesus. Send us to the right people that are hungry, Lord, oh God, that are hungry and searching for truth, Lord, oh God. Send us, Lord, oh God. Lead us and guide us, Lord, oh God. Lord Jesus, let us just come together, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I, God, I, I thank you for your people, Lord, oh God. I pray a special blessing upon them, Lord, oh God. Now, Lord Jesus, as we travel tonight, Lord, oh God, that we make it back to our home safely, Lord, oh God. And Lord, we are anticipating on this Sunday, Lord, oh God, that we can come together, Lord, again, Lord, to the house of prayer, the, the house of peace, Lord, oh God, where we can meet your presence again, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise once again. We give you honor and glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus.